from my observation, uh, three should be okay. So I'm uh, comparing, this is k equals to one, then I compare k equals to three, and actually getting better prediction. Type Both type one error and type two error are reduced compared to k equals to one. So you see that happening. So poor vector machine, we directly using the so-called linear SVM, uh, SVC from the Psych, uh, Psychic Learn library. Um, <clears throat> we perform the training and fit, and we perform a so-called prediction, and we plot them out. So the prediction actually, uh, y, <clears throat> y trend. So we can see how well the fitting it is, okay? And we can also predict using the, the model SVC predict, and then we print out the confusion matrix Y test against the Y predict. Then, and we also can print out the classification report, see the precision for actually <clears throat> Benign and manigulance actually better than the K, K nearest neighborhood algorithm. But here what we have is we have 30 features. Next things I want to show is so-called using a principal component. So we're trying to see what is the linear combination of any uh, linear combination of those 30 features. Uh, we produce a better uh, so-called principal uh, component uh, analysis. So if the data is skewed in a certain way. So any subset of the features actually produce and what type of weight actually uh, for each one of features. So maybe the first uh, columns has weight of one, second column has a weight of three, and fourth column only have a weight of uh, 0.5 or 0.25. So any kind of a linear combination combined, can we perform a better prediction? <clears throat> so you see that the fitting line uh, compared to the first two features, uh, actually I choose the fifth and seven, is pretty bad separation, okay? Even though uh, I know this is uh, one, one class and the other, uh, the dark blue is another, uh, but, and the line is not properly separating uh, these two. So we know the prediction is not that good, even though they give me the pre uh, precision about 95 and 98. So we perform a principal component analysis, use define the principal component PCA, uh, model and fit the model and transform all the data into the uh, <clears throat> according to the principal component. So instead of uh, I have uh, 30 features, now I choose only three first three principal components. I can choose up to 30, okay? So I'm only choosing the first three. And this XPCA is to transform the data. So originally you see that your scale the feature is 569 times 30. However, the after the principal component analysis, you have only three features. And that's the first three most important principal components. I'm using this principal component as my features and these features and the first features and second features and third features are linear combination of the 30 features in the various way. <clears throat> All right. So again, then I'm using this XPCA as the out, uh, using the outcome of the principal component analysis as the trending set, okay, X, uh, X and Y using the same diagnosis column, either zero or one, do the similar type of uh, <clears throat> linear uh, support vector machine uh, type of uh, fitting. 
Okay, so you can see that X Trend only have three features now instead of 30. Greatly reduce the dimensionality of your feature space. And this many times we call this called dimension reduction. In the real world data, a lot of times you have many uh, features and you don't know which one is important, which one is not. Um, using principal component analysis help you to figure it out and the linear combination of the features you have may be the most, who are the most important ones in that case. So <clears throat> I'm using these three features instead of the original 30 features and to perform the same <clears throat> uh, linear support vector machine um, training and fitting. And uh, as you can see, actually, the lines separate these two classes much better than this case. Everybody see this compared to the previous one? <clears throat> of course, the, the confusion matrix, you see that misclassification for type one error or type two errors are greatly reduced and the position for uh, benign and uh, manigulants are also increased. And also I can perform the similar things using K nearest neighborhood uh, using the principal components uh, data instead of using the original data and then we can perform. So this is pretty much the first five parts you have and you need to discuss based on the positions and number of, uh, and the confusion matrix give us a discussion on the part five how which method give you the better uh, outcome Okay, and breast cancer uh, data set is fairly uh, well organized, uh, well behaved data set. And in the real world, you are dealing with much more complicated uh, method. And this type of uh, problem usually in using in uh, medical diagnosis, okay, and possibility of disease uh, infections and the possibility of the death, or we call the sept septical patient. Um, many of the so-called marketing, uh, market segmentation, which means uh, which region or which type of customer purchasing what type of uh, uh, product from you, or they prefer what type of discount strategy. So these are the uh, real world application for classification projects and the method we introduce right here are a fairly uh, standard uh, procedure. They are much more sophisticated, but here I'm just introducing some of the uh, basic for you. And I want you to finish yourself part, five, uh, part six regarding using decision tree and random forest. Uh, I also have a so-called uh, extreme gradient boost uh, algorithm in that notebook as well, but we not require you to do it in this homework, just the decision tree and the random forest and compare that with uh, part five, okay? Any question? I hope I quickly round downs what it is.